Looking to go cookie-less with your analytics tracking? Well, I have bad news for you. There's really no such thing as cookie-less analytics. But with that said, there is an opportunity to drastically decrease the number of cookies you need for analytics tracking by moving to Google Analytics 4. How do cookies work in GA4? And how do you make sure that you're making privacy a priority? Listen up, and I'll tell you how to go mostly cookie-less in GA4. Google Analytics 4 is the newest analytics tool in the block, soon to be the only analytics tool supported by Google. And there are so many changes with GA4 that it can be overwhelming to try to understand. From relatively minor things like the loss of bounce rate to significant changes like the introduction of data streams, GA4 is a whole new beast. But what's all this talk about cookie-less tracking in GA4? Well, the good news is this. GA4 is privacy-centric and Google designed it to work with or without cookies. By leveraging machine learning and statistical modeling, GA4 can fill in data gaps as the world becomes less and less dependent on cookies. And that means that with GA4, Google Analytics has shifted to meet the needs of an increasingly cookie-less world. But does it completely eliminate cookies? That's what we want to talk about today. And just a quick note, for a complete explanation of cookies, check out our video on first versus third party cookies in the video description. Okay, so what is a cookie? A cookie is a file that stores a small piece of data about a user and cookies can be traced all the way back to 1994 when web developers first used cookies to make shopping carts on e-commerce websites possible. Cookies can store all kinds of information depending on what you want your website to track. Now, third-party cookies, they enable remarketing campaigns that follow you across the internet. And that's where things can get a little dicey. As more websites share third-party data about users, they can paint a more detailed picture of who you are, what you like, and what you're likely to do from a consumer behavior perspective. And that obviously has a lot of value for marketing and advertisers and a lot of potential for abuse, which leads us to an age old question. Are cookies bad? Cookies aren't inherently bad. And in a lot of ways, they're pretty useful. They can help create a personalized experience for you and make things easier. For example, auto filling data, it's quite helpful. And so for trustworthy sites, there's nothing wrong with allowing cookies, but it's very difficult then to figure out where to draw the line with cookies because not all cookies are created equal. And the issue isn't when websites use cookies to remember you or the contents of your shopping cart. Really, things quickly get problematic when websites track you across multiple domains. Over time, they can learn about you and piece together your behavior and form a profile on you for advertisements. And this behavior when cookies track users across multiple domains is called third-party cookies. And of course, when cookies only are used by the website that you're visiting, they're called first-party cookies. Now, first party cookies are generally considered to be more acceptable, and these are what allow Google Analytics 4 to remember visitor history. Third party cookies, though, are nowhere to be found in GA4. Okay, so how does GA4 avoid third party cookies? Well, GA4 relies on first party cookies, which keeps them compliant with the new privacy laws like the GDPR and the CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act. But Google also wanted to be ahead of the curve when it comes to new privacy developments, and they're definitely on the right track with GA4. And this means that with changes like Apple's iOS 14.5 blocking the widespread use of third-party cookies in apps, it confirms that the future is less likely to be based on third-party cookies and that advertisers need to get on board if they want to advertise. And the cool thing about GA4 is that it's designed to leverage machine learning and other protocols to fill in data gaps that are lost by cookies. They call this blended data, and on Google's official blog, they explain it to us. They say the new Google Analytics is designed to adapt to a future with or without cookies as identifiers. It uses a flexible approach to measurement and in the future will include modeling to fill in the gaps where data may be incomplete. And this means that you can rely on Google Analytics to help you measure your marketing results and meet customer needs now as you navigate the recovery and as you face uncertainty in the future. In other words, GA4 is third-party cookie-less, but I will warn you, if you're looking for something that is truly cookie-less, nothing on the web is truly cookie-less. Okay, so how is Google, the world's largest ad platform, coping with the loss of third-party cookies? Well, in 2021, Google proposed an alternative to third-party cookies called Flock, which stood for the Federated Learning of Cohorts. This proposal sounded pretty good to me as an advertiser, but it was immediately rejected by the privacy community and it forced Google to come up with a better solution that respected users' privacy for ad targeting. And this led to Google's current proposal, which is called the Privacy Sandbox and the Topics API, which is a way for browsers to determine topics of interest to you based on your browsing history. 
The way Google says that it will work is that your browsing history will determine your main weekly interest every single week, and they will store three weeks of topics that may be of interest to you in your browser, and then after the third week, they go away. And so when you visit a site that runs ads, these topics will be fed to the ad network to determine which advertisements you're gonna see. And while this will make the majority of ads less relevant than true retargeting because it's based on a broad topic, it does respect your privacy. And I imagine this change will benefit large advertisers who are looking for brand impressions the most because that's what needs the least amount of targeting just to get the name out there. Now the topics engine avoids invasive technologies like third-party cookies and browser fingerprinting, allowing Google to serve relevant ads without using covert tracking techniques. Okay, so how does GA4 work in a cookie-less way? Well, since the regulations around cookies are still evolving, it can be tricky thinking about how to collect user data while respecting privacy. And while first-party cookies are still used to remember visitor activity for your website, GA4 is based on the idea of tracking users with a randomly generated user ID instead of cookies. And you can use Google Tag Manager to make your users virtually anonymous by creating a random client ID on every page on load. And this means the user will be anonymous for all intents and purposes, but GA4 can still track their behavior across your site. Because GA4 was built in an era of increased privacy, you now have more control than ever to respect user privacy while still gaining insights from your analytics data. And that leads to the conclusion here. The world of digital marketing is always changing. But we are entering a new era with things like cookie list, Google Analytics, Apple iOS 14.5, and ever increasing concerns about privacy. And while some marketers may find it stressful, with change always comes new opportunity. So what do you think? Are you ready to go cookie list and jump on the GA4 bandwagon? The best way to get started is by downloading our 30 page Google Analytics 4 migration checklist PDF, which you can download for free at ddu.ai slash GA4.